Hi everyone, welcome to True Crime Tuesday. Please note that this story is not suitable for younger audiences, not for viewers under the age of 18. The graphic descriptions, graphic violence and the themes explored are not suitable for audiences that may find these details disturbing. Therefore, viewer discretion is strongly advised. Thank you. Today, I'm going to bring to you the story of the slaying of 22-year-old Elizabeth Short, also known as the Black Dahlia, whose extensively mutilated body was found in the Leeward Park neighborhood of Los Angeles, California. I want you to have a look. in 1947 with the details surrounding it leading to lasting cultural intrigue in the whole of America and guys this crime remains one of the most gruesome most cited and one of the most well-known unsolved murders in American history a crime that has generated various theories and intense public speculation and Elizabeth Short's life and death have been the basis of numerous books and films. Please take a look. Let's explore who Elizabeth Short was. Born on 29th July 1924 in Boston, Elizabeth was an aspiring actress who worked as a waitress in Boston. She was about 165 centimeters tall, an attractive woman with striking features and a pretty smile. There are all kinds of theories as to why she was called Black Dahlia. Some say that the newspapers later dubbed her the Black Dahlia in part because she had dark hair and had an apparent preference for black clothing and also because of the Blue Dahlia movie out at the time. Short had a pretty rough life as a teenager where she was arrested at the age of 16 for underage drinking and was also reported to have had a torrid love life. Researchers say that she was seen at gay bars where she picked up women for sex. Let's come back to that horrid January morning. It was January 15, 1947. A mother taking a child for a walk in a Los Angeles neighborhood stumbled upon a gruesome and utterly horrid sight that stopped her and her child in their tracks. A body of a young naked woman sliced clean in half at the waist. The body was just a few feet from the sidewalk and it looked so pale and the crime scene contained no blood and also the body was posed in such a way that the woman who discovered it initially thought she was looking at a mannequin at first glance. Despite the extensive mutilation and cuts on the body, there wasn't a drop of blood at the scene, indicating that the woman had been killed elsewhere. Short, severely mutilated body was completely severed at the waist and drained of blood, leaving her skin a pallid white. The body had apparently been washed by the killer. It was such a ghastly, grisly sight. When the young woman's body was found, it has been noted that the body had been drained of blood before being cut in half at the waist. Short's face had also been mutilated, cuts reaching from the corners of her mouth to her ears, as if forcing a smile onto her face, creating an effect known as the Glasgow smile. 
what is the Glasgow smile? A Glasgow smile, also known as a Chelsea smile, a Glasgow, a Chelsea, Birkenhead, a Buck 50, or Shashire Green. It's a wound caused by making a cut from the corners of a victim's mouth up to the ears, leaving a scar in the shape of a smile. This is a most sadistic, vile, twisted torch technique that makes us question the level of humanity left in human beings. Take a look. I need to warn you that these pictures might be disturbing to some viewers. Viewer discretion is strongly advised. My research indicated that the name Glasgow Smile came from a practice originated in Glasgow in the 1920s and 1930s among street criminals. Gangs would often use it on others and on enemy gangs as a warning not to mess with them. Cutthroat razors would commonly be used to create the smile. This vile, perverted, despicable torture technique later became popular with English street gangs, especially among the Chelsea Headhunters, a London-based depraved group of monsters. Some of the sadistic and degenerate members coined the term Chelsea Green or Chelsea Smile. Some investigators thought the crime looked utterly personal as the sick killer showed so much rage. Later, the investigators also noted the cuts had been executed by someone likely familiar with surgical procedures because no organs or bones had any signs of trauma despite the brutal cuttings. The dead woman was quickly identified as the 22-year-old Hollywood hopeful named Elizabeth Short. Now I want you to take a look at the Los Angeles Police Department flyer on Elizabeth Shaw. In support of LA Police, the FBI got to work. They held massive numbers of interviews and tried their best to zoom in on the killer, but to no avail. As I had told you before, there were suspicions that the killer or killers would have had skills in dissection because the body was so cleanly cut. As a result, a group of students at the University of Southern California Medical School were checked out also. Then there came this unbelievable and tantalizing potential break in the case. Guys, everyone felt so hopeful. An anonymous letter was received by the Bureau of Investigations and was suspected that it was from the killer. The Bureau searched for a match to fingerprints found on the letter, but the prints weren't in FBI files. So that was another dead end. According to some of the research I did on Elizabeth Short, I found out that she had been in love with a military officer, Major Matthew Michael Gordon, Jr. He was a decorated Army Air Force officer training for deployment to the China, Burma, India theater of operations of World War II. He is said to have been very impressed by Elizabeth's beauty. I want you to take a look at him. Elizabeth had told friends that Gordon had sent her a marriage proposal in writing while he was recovering from injuries from a plane crash in India. She had accepted his offer of marriage. However, unfortunately, Gordon died in a crash on August 10, 1945, less than a week before the surrender of Japan ended the war. Elizabeth was again left disappointed with lack of hope. Now, to more details of her murder, a warning, this could be truly disturbing to some viewers. Medical examiners determined that she had been dead for around 10 hours, 
prior to the discovery of her body. This meant that the time of her death was either sometime during the evening of January 14th or the early morning hours of January 15th. In addition to the cuts on her face, Elizabeth had several cuts on her thigh and breasts where entire portions of flesh had been sliced away. It is said that the lower half of the body was positioned a foot away from the upper half and her intestines had been tucked neatly beneath her buttocks. The killer had apparently spent a considerable amount of time with the body after killing her. My research indicated also that the corpse of Elizabeth had been posed with her hands over her head, her elbows bent at right angles and her legs spread apart. Can you believe how appalling and sickening all this must have been to all who saw this and to those who were involved in the investigations to bring her killer to justice? There were several suspects and they were all investigated thoroughly, but nothing could be proven and they were all cleared of the gruesome killing of Elizabeth Short, which became a frustrating mystery that could not be solved. The FBI could not get a proper lead on her murderer. The case went cold. Who killed the Black Dahlia and why? It's an enigma. The murderer has never been identified and as so much time has passed, Probably, I don't know guys, will the case ever be solved? The questions mount, the legend grows. Thank you. That's it from me tonight. See you again soon.